Look at this huge package that's arrived. We're gonna be creating a lot of art today using a brand new medium. I don't know how this is gonna go. I was kindly sent this package by Artex and it's an art supply I've wanted for so long. They also sent a sketchbook, which we're not gonna be using today. But that's pretty, isn't it? What's the back? That's pretty, that's a big sketchbook as well. Drawing, sketching, colour pencils and markers. Obviously I'll probably attempt watercolours as well. Let's see. Can you see that that's a little bit glittery? That's so cool. Oh, that is nice. This is really exciting, but it's not today's plan. It's so crazy to finally have one of these. So I got the pink anime set because it has a lot of pastel tones. I think all of these are the extras in the pink set and the blue set has metallics and neon colors instead. We've got some stickers for the ends. I don't know what these bigger ones are for though. What are these bigger ones for? Do they just like, do they just go on the side somewhere? I don't know. Let's do the little ones. I hope they're in the right order. These are honestly so tiny. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna do this a million times. It will be faster for you. Honestly, that was a lot more fiddly than I thought it would be. I wasn't very satisfying at all. We've got the journal out, but things are a little bit different now. Instead of making a bullet journal setup, we're painting four pages of art themed around Greek mythology. And there might be some dates to the side, but it's more about the art now. This is a journal, less of a bullet journal. First up is Medusa. And you might be thinking, am I really just gonna go ahead and paint a portrait of Medusa with a brand new medium? Yes, I am. I really wanna start, swatches can come later. There is something I want to do first though. If you've been watching my daily doodle diary challenge, you'll have seen this book a lot. I mean, I know it was free, but I'm really getting the use out of it. There's like 300 pages and it's perfect for this kind of thing. The main reason I picked it today though is because it's kind of a pastel tone, which I think will go well with the color palette that we're using. Choosing the first color was very difficult because we haven't done any swatches. And I think this color is a little bit too light. It doesn't look as light on the actual pen, but on paper, this looks almost white. This is very cream, but I guess we're gonna make it work. We're gonna pull it together and Honestly, like we do, so bear with, we do pull it together somehow. The thing about these acrylic markers is they are pretty opaque, which makes them very different to any kind of medium that I've used before. They are quite similar to gouache, but gouache can be blended quite easily. And whilst you could use paintbrushes for this, I just don't think that really goes with the entire point of it being a marker. Personally, I think since they're markers, they should be a lot easier to use. If I'm having to use like water and a paintbrush to try and blend it, I might as well just use acrylics. So I had to adapt a different style. And at this point, I don't really know how it's going. We need an intervention, we need a break, let's go make a tea so we can look at it with fresh eyes. That's my excuse for everything, but you know what? It always makes things better. Also, Jaffa Cakes. Grabbing some greens for the snake hair. And honestly, I'm not a fan of green. You probably know this already, but the greens in this set are actually really nice. There's some really nice pastel green and blue shades. I guess because, well, this is the pastel set, but also a lot of these colors do have white mixed into them to make them a little bit more opaque, which means that they're actually really nice tones. Sometimes when you buy sets, you just get really obnoxious primary colors, like the really, really bright ones, which you do technically need, but they're not actually nice to use on their own. This isn't like that. This set does have the primaries, but because it's a 60 marker set, you actually get a lot of really nice, unique colors that you don't normally get in sets like these. I guess that's mostly just because it's 60 colors though. But look how gorgeous these greens are. There's mint greens, there's unique kind of turquoise shades. There's actual nice greens, which are hard to find. And honestly, I think the green eyes go perfectly with the snake hair. Even though we had no idea where this portrait was going, 
it's already kind of coming together. As I said, this is technically the bullet journal September spread, but really we're just having fun here. I actually enjoyed painting the entire page. I think it looks fantastic having so much colour down and it doesn't feel too wasteful. I guess mostly because the paints are quite opaque, so I only did one layer and I think that worked well. The desk is crazy messy as always, so I'm gonna quickly pack all of that away as we move on to the next page. And look how great the paints look back in the pot. Honestly, I had to do this every single time because if I put a color back in that pot, I was never gonna find it again. Some of the colors look so similar. I'm reaching for some cute little tapes now. I'm thinking anything that's kind of a neutral will work really well for this theme. And we're picking out some pink and purple markers. That's the colour theme for this next page. And this one isn't really Greek mythology, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, it's not really. And using the brand new medium after painting Medusa, we're now gonna go straight into David or David? The iconic sculpture by Michelangelo. We're really not going easy today. We're painting two very iconic things with a brand new medium and it could go horrifically wrong, but it actually doesn't. They actually both go very well, surprisingly. Is it David or is it David? I'm gonna say David, okay? I'm sorry if that's wrong. It's the iconic sculpture in Florence by Michelangelo. I would love to visit it, I really want to. And I would also love to do a how much art can I make video in Florence where we go around and do a load of drawings and go around all the museums and I think that would be fantastic. If my YouTube channel blew up a little bit and I could afford to do that, that would be great. That's on my list. I went to Rome the year before last and we did actually film the week in Rome. Saw a lot of Michelangelo sculptures and also visited the Sistine Chapel, which was incredible. So I kind of wanted to. I kind of wanted to paint the iconic sculpture. And I guess a lot of Renaissance art is kind of based on Greek mythology, so it's not that out there. I'm not sure this was the right color choice though. This is very pink, like very, very pink. There are a lot of really lovely colors in this set. My favorite colors to use are pinks, purples, blues. I also like quite niche colors like mint green, apricot, the kind of fake shades. But this set has a lot of those. This set has some really fantastic colors in. So we're using a dark purple for the shadows. And honestly, I don't know if this was the best choice. I kind of like how subtle it's looking with the pink. And I do think the purple shadows are a little bit out there. I'm not sure they really match this piece. The style that we're doing is something that I've not really done before. I guess I've done a couple of portraits a long while ago, which are actually on my channel. I did one. Billie Eilish painting in this kind of style and I also did another painting that didn't go super well. That was a portrait of a woman but it had some bright orange and neon colours and it was a little bit odd. So I have kind of done this style before but I haven't done it in an opaque medium. They were both in watercolour. I guess the style is kind of 2D with crazy highlights and shadows. That's how I would describe it. I don't know. Maybe it does have a name. I like it though. I hope you like it. I I like it. Maybe it's something we should do more. Very quickly adding a calendar since it's technically a bullet journal setup, but it's okay, you don't need to see any of that, so we'll just skip over it. I decided to add a little bit more decoration to this page. So we're adding a kind of pillar on one side, and then there's just a couple of other like random things that kind of fit the theme. We've got like a wine bottle and a vase. There was a gap and I needed to fill it. And I couldn't do another crazy portrait of an iconic figure, so I did a vase. I think this is my longest bullet journal setup ever. I mean, the raw footage was like four and a half hours, so it definitely took a little while, but this is my best yet. And at this point, I was pretty chuffed with myself because I haven't created two pieces this good this quickly in a long while. Moving on to the third page now. We've used green, we've used pink. I kind of wanted to use blue. It's a little bit similar to what we've done previously on the first page. And because of that, we're using blues and greys and kind of leaning to that side of blue rather than like blue greens. 
also getting in the swing of the decoration now i'm loving the book pages the washi tape i think it really just looks cute and ties the entire piece together for this page we are doing a portrait of a woman this same style going in with lighter tones first then adding those shadows and mid tones and then maybe going back and adding a few more highlights that's basically the gist of it that's how i did the entire piece I think these blues are actually a lot more harsh than the pink tones. I think the pinks were actually very similar to each other, which is probably why it didn't look like it had very much contrast until the purple was added. On this piece though, I'm using grey for the earrings and a little bit on the hair, just to make it look different to the other spreads. That's one thing that I do like to keep in mind when I do my bullet journal spreads. I like to make nice art, obviously, but I also kind of want the pages to look cohesive to each other but also different from each other which is very difficult to try and achieve. The cohesiveness in these spreads is the paper and the washi tape that ties it together because it's on all of them and the fact that we're using the same medium but then they're all different because they have their own colour theme. Saying that I don't know why I added an orange lightning bolt to this page. Like you can see it just doesn't match in the slightest. I kind of planned for the last page to be yellow and orange and I guess I wanted it to sort of tie into the next page but it makes no sense. I should have just stuck to the theme and I should have done the lightning bolt in blue but for some reason we have a bright orange lightning bolt. This one's a little bit more simple but it's all done and we're gonna have an intermission. Making another cup of tea of course, grabbing the sketchbook and we're finally gonna quickly smash out these swatches. It's a little bit late but at this point I was kind of struggling to pick colours but when you're choosing something like a skin tone you need to be able to see that it is the correct colour otherwise you end up with a very pasty medusa like I did. Finish the swatches and rearrange the markers because they did arrive in a very strange order and then I realised that I left two next to me after sorting out the entire set. It looks better though I don't know why these sets always come in such a weird order. This is how the swatches are looking none of them were dried up they were all pretty opaque some colors a little bit more streaky than others one of the grays and one of the blues the ultramarine in particular was quite streaky back to the book we're moving on to the final page and if you haven't got yourself a book yet i highly recommend honestly i think the book pages just work so well especially because we're using acrylic markers and they're opaque so we can go over the page absolutely fine you can go to like the telephone library that I went to to get this book. You can go to something like that and you can pick one up for free or you can get one from a charity shop and they're really good. And also there's so many pages in them that I don't feel guilty for using them because sometimes when you use art supplies that cost money you can actually feel guilty about using them and what if you create something that you don't like or what if you put it in a journal but then you don't look at it and you don't have that if it's free. The final page is yellow and orange so obviously we need to do some more pillars. It just fits the theme and it's nice and simple and at this point we have done three entire portraits and it's getting kind of late. First impressions wise, I am very impressed with these markers. They are really easy to use, they flow really nicely, they're opaque, the colours are lovely. I am going to be using these a lot more because they're actually really good. I want to say a huge thank you again to Artex for sending them. I actually have a discount code down below if you want to get yourself some of these markers. They're a lot of fun and I've already used them in my next Create This Book page, which I'm super excited to show you. It's a really fun one and the markers are so easy to use in that book, so I'm definitely going to be using them a lot more. This last spread is very simple, but we're filling the journal with art and less of the bullet journal elements. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun trying a new medium. I hope you've liked seeing me experiment with this new style. It's a really cool idea. I don't know, should we go in this direction again? Let me know down below if you like it. This is how the pages are looking and it's my favourite setup so far, honestly. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye bye.